for April the 15th, 2020, we talk about Lonely Mountains Downhill, the Xbox event, and we ask you which video game tattoos you would get or which ones you already have. Welcome to Level 329. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Mysmith. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. This is attempt number two at recording this episode. Uh, my uh, little uh, program here to record things on my end uh, has decided uh, decided not to. They basically decided to stop recording things. We were not too terribly far in, so that's good. Uh, but mm-hmm. I'm going to not try to recreate the other the other intro that we did. Um, how are you, because... you going to top our conversation about weather that has been yeah. lost? <laughs> It's <laughs> like tears and rain. <laughs> like tears and unseasonal rain. Yeah. Oh, geez. Oh, Pete. Yeah. No. Um, I, and I, my, my, my life's been boring. Everybody knows what's going on. Uh, can't go anywhere. Staying indoors, playing with cats. So I'm going to see, I'm going to see the floor. All of us, all, all of us were, were, were here. Ben, I'm just going to go to you randomly. What's, uh, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is harder to talk about like new things because there's not as much new media. So it's like you got Netflix slash what that's what TV is now, I guess. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. video now games, kind of. TV. Yeah. yeah, it's the actual like new movies. Like it's hard to keep up with them because like mm-hmm. they were planning on releasing in theaters and that's not really an option anymore. Yeah. So now, now it's all vaguely like on demand, which is, I think is something you have to have a cable box to get. It's mm. weird. I know, like, for example, Portrait of a Woman on Fire is supposed to be good, and that's on, like, Hulu, mm-hmm. but I don't have that, so it's like, I guess I'll wait some other time to watch it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, can I, I make a... like a very upsetting portrait. <laughs> it, it is an excellent title, by the way. Yes. Uh, ben, can I make a Netflix recommendation for you? Sure. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a three-episode series, um, Middle Ditch and Schwartz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So yeah, I, I did watch... Here's what passes for new content is I watched, they did a Twitch stream, Twitch is, uh, or, uh, Jackbox, by the way, they're doing streams like every week, I think on Tuesdays and Fridays. Oh, fun. And they're, do- they're donating money to charities that are like really need help during this time. So like, oh, that one was... was, yeah. And so, uh, Ben Schwartz and Thomas Middleditch was on that. Twi- uh, Thomas Middleditch is also like streaming on Twitch right now. Semi regularly oh, since nice. everyone's like trapped. Yeah. yeah. No, that's just uh, I've 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 enjoyed I've enjoyed that. Usually, you know, improv is real uh, hit or miss, but I really like both of yes. those dudes. They're both super funny, um, and yeah, I was I was uh, kind of taken aback at how well their uh, their Netflix stuff worked for me. All right, I will watch it now because I trust your opinion on these matters. Yes, uh, you can just I, I go through, go through, go go through the three of them, or you know, watch the first one and drop it if you don't like it. I. I, I you will not hurt my feelings. <laughs> I was I was unaware there were only three. I thought it was going to be like a standard eight. I think um, I think that maybe they're going to do them in more batches. They might have more films, but like right now, it's just three. Yeah, I I, I watched the first, and it mm-hmm. is as delightful as you say. Um, my my thought was that it's it's kind of it strikes the right balance between how meta it is versus mm-hmm. not. Like, you know, sometimes the, the long form improv can just rely a little too heavy on like, hey, we're making this up. So here's here's some things that are funny about making stuff up on the spot. <laughs> right. Um, it has some of that. There's, yeah, you know, yeah. there's that moments, but it, it feels organic. It doesn't feel like they're harping on it mm-hmm. uh, or mugging to the fact that it's long form improv. Yeah. Yeah. Great. It is very weird to see like pre-recorded improv, by the way. Like it kind <laughs> of undercuts the experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that 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 is that is my recommendation but yeah no i mean i've i've pretty much only been engaging with comfort food media um Mm -hmm. up to the you know for the past for the past while um you know especially under quarantine you know i'm I'm all the way through community just just because you know community i started started that this week as well yeah yeah season two yeah Yeah. the season two is where it gets really good Mm mm-hmm yeah. So we we've been watching um Blown Away, which is like a glass blowers competition. Okay. Oh, you guys they lean way like cool concept, they lean way too hard on the title. 
Like, <laughs> the just... away pun is in every other sentence. I mean, do, like, you know, so 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 they just they just drop the title left and right because that's that's kind of the level they're working on. Yep, it's it's just the you know it's there's too many places where blown away is convenient to say, uh, and they never like it, they never walk around it. They always walk straight through it. Mm. So, is it an unknown host or a host that's a celebrity from like ten or fifteen years ago? Uh, unknown to me, which right. means it could be either. <laughs> a, t- a titan in the glass blowing world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bottles with caps, you know, like the like the like the like little latches that have the cap on it. He invented those. Wait, is that a name of a person? Bottles with caps. Yep, bottles with caps. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a rap name. I can't. All right. <laughs> How dare you insult bottles with caps? Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, what, what else? What else have you been been, been up to, Dennis? Uh, how, how are things? Oh, no, you, you how are things in lockdown right with the family? There. Yeah. Uh, all right. uh, it ain't nothing else. No, we we've been uh, we've doing lots of fun stuff together. Some of it I'll talk about on this show. Okay. Um, we've been reading uh, a lot. So, Journey to the Center of the Earth is expanding everyone's vocabulary. Hmm. Um, which is it's probably good that that Luke can watch me struggle to sound out words that I don't recognize as he's learning to do the same. Ill build confidence <laughs> as 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 his faith in you diminishes, his faith in himself <laughs> will necessarily inflate. It's, it's a, a finite amount of faith in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, you're doing a service for him. I, a sacrifice I'm willing to make. But yeah, it's, it's been fun. Uh, the book is surprisingly funny. Like uh-huh. it's, it's it's good stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's me plus, uh, middle edition of swords. Cool. Uh, David, how about you? Um, not too much. Uh, a friend invited me to a Facebook group that is just called quote, a Facebook group where we all pretend to be Klingons. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> Which is which is very very entertaining actually. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, you uh, beat my undead sex cult. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so, lots lots of just you know silly memes. Um, there there is also also a group um, uh, that is the uh, a group where we all uh, pretend to be Borg. Okay. And, um, <laughs> Wait, does the Klingon one do you speak in Klingon? Um, I mean, you know, you you speak like Worf does. Yeah, basically, basically. And uh, but the members of the uh, group where we all, um, you know, pretend to be uh, Borg have taken to joining this group, and you know, hello, fellow Klingons, have you considered being assimilated for honor of empire? <laughs> <laughs> um is there another group where you all pretend to be ferengi but it's just the mra boards on reddit <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> no i think my favorite thing i've seen on it so far is someone uh programmed a uh klingon like i guess sort of alarm clock type app where you know every morning it uh greets him with a you know the weather and um you know kind of a inspirational um oh uh, you know advice for the day mm-hmm. except that the inspirational advice for the day is always today is a good day to die <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so yeah that's been just incredibly dorky but very very endearing you're, t- you're talking on a video game podcast dorky is fun <laughs> We're gonna we'll make fun of you for it, but it's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll make fun of you, but you don't have to go bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> We're making fun with you. Yeah, yeah. It, I, 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 based on the laugh, I correctly remembered which one the Ferengi were. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cool. Uh, also, can I can I get an invite after the show? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen a few of those. The like the big one that I know is the is the Facebook group. It probably dissolved by now because it probably got too big. But the one where like uh, where where we all pretend to be boomers was it was a fun <laughs> one. Yeah. I I liked the as much as like I don't know kind of the meta jokes a little disturbing. I I still liked the. Um, the Reddit, you know, Thanos did nothing wrong. 
Oh, which, yeah. <laughs> which then, uh, like, the big build up their fire event was they then banned like one quarter of their half. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or half, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perma banned them from the thread. Yeah. Did the snap. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez uh yeah well that sounds like some banter to me um i <laughs> Two reddit references achieved yeah. yeah no we need we need to pull out before somebody says actually the whole site isn't like that yeah i, I know it's, <laughs> it's a, it, life is a very <laughs> colored worse. tapestry um so, <laughs> no um but uh i i don't know i want to go do the show you guys uh and by the show i mean we've got the regular kind of one for you we got the uh the grind Got the multiplayer, and then we're going to round out with the end boss. I'm really excited about my end boss this time, you guys. Uh, mm-hmm. Some cool things coming down the pike. Uh, but first, we're going to do... The Grind. The Grind, where we talk about the things we have been playing over the last period of time or so. Do you mind if I go first? Yes. Jump on in. Do yeah. it. <laughs> uh, so I've got one that I'm having an awful lot of fun with. Uh, it is a game called Lonely Mountains Downhill. Okay. Um, I, I like literally, I just like, I saw somebody on Twitter. I saw Nick Sutner, former one up guy currently working for for Sony or something, I guess. Um, he said like, Oh, like people said lonely mountains would be good, but nobody told me it would be like one of my favorite games ever. It's like N plus, but with a Z axis. And I was like, huh, I like N plus. That's a fun platformer. And I was real surprised to find out that Lonely Mountains Downhill is a downhill mountain biking game. Um, and I was like, mm-hmm. okay, all right, okay. Um, and it's really, really good. Uh, so the first thing that'll stick out to you when you fire it up is, uh, or you know, even just like look at um, uh, screenshots of it, is <laughs> uh, the delightful, like low poly uh, kind of gradient shaded aesthetic to it. Uh, it's real basic kind of looking, but it's it looks, got looks similar to inside, but yeah. like happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, just a you know, wonderful color work and all this stuff. Um, and there are like four different mountains that you go down, and each of the mountains has like different trails uh, that you can start out on. And um, you know, it starts out uh, where the first time you do a trail, like you don't have any particular goal; it's just to reach the end. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, you, you know, the, the, the controls are very simple. You're not really doing tricks or anything like that. Like there's not a jump button or anything. It's just, you know, steer, brake, um, you or yeah, there, uh, steer, brake, pedal. Um, and then there's like a button you can press to do like a, do like a sprint. You have like a little stamina meter to go real quick. Um, and, uh, no backflip button. No, 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 no backflip button. I'm Aww. pretty sure they're like probably situations you can get into where one happens i'm not really sure but this is this isn't like a dave mira bmx kind of thing this is pure, it, honestly, purely about navigating space it makes me think of like typewriter or games like that mm-hmm. um only in three dimensions yeah or like um it's almost like a 3d like uh like alto's adventure kind of thing or like mm-hmm. uh like excite bike where you are trying to Use the physics, um, or or like uh, like a weird comparison would be like a three D version of Trials, uh, Trials HD. You know that motorbike game? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Um, but but you're you know just like you have these very simple controls, and it's just about navigating the space. And you know you start out on a trail, and it's like, hey, just reach the end of this. There are like checkpoints and stuff, and then there are escalating, you know, an escalating series of goals to get where it's like okay get under this time um finish this particular trail with fewer than x number of uh, of crashes when you crash it's a horror show like your guy goes limp and like red pixels fly everywhere like there's a surprising <laughs> amount of blood there's spray. there's a lot of blood um <laughs> but like when you're in the zone and you're not just navigating the trail but like really reading the way the mountain is put together and like finding finding unexpected shortcuts and like you know shaving a little bit of a you know shaving some distance off of a line and doing all of these like little racing game tricks and like reaching your flow um wow is this one of the best feeling games i've played in a good long time Hmm. um the, the thing that unlocked it for me was there are two steering modes so like this kind of takes place from a like a top down kind of perspective and the camera like generally like leads like leans a little bit in the direction that you're going to be going 
by default it was like oh you move in which whichever direction you push but that actually mm. ended up making it really hard for me to do like the kind of precision things that i wanted so i turned it into like left makes your makes your guy turn the handlebars left and right makes your guy turn the handlebar right and then all mm. of a sudden you are doing just these really feathered kind of <laughs> these really feathered kind of turns with it um and you know just doing things like oh yeah like this this totally makes intuitive sense that might not be the case for everybody but like don't let the tank control aspect of that like scare you off because that was the thing that ultimately like made me made me really like lean into it um and so i, start I have doing a question about the camera do. yep oh so the camera like it, from from just watching little video snippets feels like it is extremely zoomed in for moving at any kind of speed. So is this a game where if you, if the camera zoomed out and gave you more forewarning, you could get that much faster? Or is it basically like if you're doing it right, you're never going to be going so fast that the zoomed in camera is, is a problem. Yeah. So what I found is the faster, the faster I go, the more the camera pulls out. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, um, and you know, to a certain degree, like you know you are even if you could see where you're going to be going the trails get so intricate that like planning ahead wouldn't necessarily save you you know ah, it is it is kind of more about you know it's not it's more about internalizing the course yes but also developing the intuition to make split second decisions based on how you how, how you how you fall basically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it seems like if the camera, if you could control it, it would ruin a lot of the game because it looks like a lot of the shortcuts are kind of hidden by the by how far away the camera is from you. Yeah, that that that, that is that 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 is certainly the case. Um, you know, but like in you know, like there's a certain amount of like leap of faith to it. But like if you you know if you know if you know that like okay I'm going down and there's going to be a switch back here or that looks like a jump. You know, it's a little bit like um like a Mario Kart level to a certain degree where like the shortcuts are there. And they are pretty well signaled. It's just the trick. The trick is getting getting through it. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Man, I'm already excited to watch speed runs of this. Yeah. No. And like you know, I finish and I get the rank. I'm playing it on Switch. Uh, you know, it was it, it works really well on that in portable mode. But like you know, you finish a you you, you finish a challenge and it's like you are ranked three thousandth. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I. I'm just happy to have finished. <laughs> so I'm positive. <laughs> I'm, here, guys. Yeah. You I'm, po I'm positive that like trials, there is going to be, you know, or, or there already is, you know, just a community of people who just rip through this. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, it's really, really good. It looks, um, yeah, it, this is, this is, I'm, I found a speed run already. For, from what I can tell, it's more about being able to control really steep falls than actually mm -hmm. getting a ton of acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see that being the case. Um, and you get like different bikes that can absorb different things that give you, uh, you know, better handling and better, you know, like you can handle falls better and things. Uh, so you can definitely like make you <laughs> tailor your bike to your style of play and stuff. So if you make it far enough, does the abominable snowman run out? And <laughs> <laughs> that would be very fun if it did. I don't know if there's a if there's a snowy mountain course kind of thing. I like looking at their gallery, I see like a desert one, and I see like a spooky, like a spooky stage. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 see if that ends up being the case. But like, yeah, this is, this is scratching like simultaneously like a few different itches for me at once. Like, you know, it's been a while since I've played a good racing game. Um, you know, I kind of generally am always looking for, like, the next thing that'll make me feel like I'm playing a Tony Hawk game. Because it's been decades since there's been a good Tony Hawk game. Mm. Um, <laughs> so this is this is kind of hitting all those at once. Hmm. Any other questions Super about cool. Lonely Mountains Downhill? Do they play Rage Against the Machine on the soundtrack? Uh, no. Yeah. All right. As far as Do I can you tell, you listen no. to Rage Against the Machine while playing the game. I don't. Yeah. I mostly listen to like politics podcasts. So <laughs> I feel oh, like no. one leads to the other. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the song without the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. 
so that's Lonely Mountains Downhill. Uh, the only other thing that I've been doing, I'm not really ready to talk about yet, but I, I know Ben was uh, excited that I started it up. Um, I started a stream of Alien Isolation. Oh, yep. okay. Hey. Yeah. And uh, you had a true-to-form experience with it in the last stream. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to bump it down to easy, and that's going to have to be okay. Uh, and, like, and it's a part of the game that everybody, you know, like people in the chat were like, yeah, this this sucks dude <laughs> like everybody has problems with this so you know it's um you know I'm, i don't feel too terrible about it but it's yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i you know i don't have much to say about it yet because you know there's so much of it and i'm only you know four hours in or so but like i'm having a good time uh most of all though i think that it is really a triumph of like visual and spatial design because mm -hmm. they, boy, do they capture the look and feel of what it's like to be in uh, one of those ships in that universe. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm excited about that. I it's... feel like somehow we need to rig up a system where, you know, people who contribute, what is it? Is it bits on? on um, yeah. Twitch. Uh, yeah. 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 Where once a certain number of bits are you know accumulated uh greta will just ambush coal at a very <laughs> tense moment <laughs> <laughs> that will be tough because greta's never actually like attacked or hurt me or yeah. even really been startled by me she like it's no she's never even like swiped at me so yeah. so so what you would need is some kind of automated like you would need to use like a raspberry pi or an arduino to set up a cat launcher <laughs> that when a, so when, a, when a certain threshold is passed, it's like a wily e. coyote slingshot that just you know <laughs> sends her right He's at like, me. I did not agree to this, um, and I don't agree to it either. That honestly seems kind of cruel, and I'm shocked that you would propose that, David. So I don't know. Really, <laughs> you do that. that. <laughs> 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 yeah but i'll have more to say about that when i get a little bit further in right now though it is it is shocking um how good that game looks and feels so nice even six you know, the, that game is six years old you guys still looks good yeah yeah 2014 crazy um let's see here i'm just going to go in the reverse order that we did last time so ben what you been what you been up to i only got one game it's a weird one I've uh I've been playing Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, cool! Oh. Yeah. So here's the rationale: I've run out of games. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> we found the bottom of the Fire barrel. Three, like Fire Emblem games are good. Like you know, yeah, have, yeah. It doesn't have to they be got, like a weird anime thing. They can just be fun strategy, you like XCOM. The, exactly. Yeah. They, it's gotten good reviews. It's in JRPG, so it's going to be time consuming. Yeah. That that was my prereq. Um, <laughs> It's fine. I've sunk a good amount of hours in in the past week. Um, it is a little creepy. You, I mean, you are playing a teacher who just casually hits on his students from time to time. No big deal. That's anime, <laughs> baby. Sorry, <laughs> I, I don't want. I don't want to get yelled at. That's certain kinds of anime, baby, and that's not a judgment on anybody who watches any anime, baby. Yeah. Okay. So I, I covered I figured, myself. <laughs> I figured this out midway through the week because I brought this up to my friends. Ooh. My one friend gets into a lot of like anime and stuff like that. He's like, I thought it was pretty toned down in that game. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you scale. don't you don't know what this <laughs> looks like to somebody from outside your world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a interesting part of it, I guess. But uh, I learned that there's apparently it can go a lot deeper than that. So yeah. Uh, I guess this Every is the uh, tea parties yet or whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's so it's like half XCOM or no, it's like a third XCOM, a third dating sim, and then a third something else that's like yet to be described. But yeah. uh, the, the dating sim aspect of it is, is on any person's birthday, you can invite them for tea and you can make conversation with them. And it's a very cute and charming mini game where it'll put up three different conversation prompts of what you can at, talk to them about. Mm -hmm. and it'll do this three times. And so based on how well you know the character, you can pick the right or wrong thing to talk about. If it's somebody who's like really into like fighting or something, you can talk to them about working out. If it's mm -hmm. somebody who has like high anxiety, you can talk about how cool it is to like stay inside and knit or something like that. <laughs> um, and then based on that, it, it basically unlocks like your friendship level with them or it, it modifies that. 
and then it allows you to give them gifts, an infinite amount of gifts if you want, mm-hmm. or all the gifts that are in your inventory. And and like and, and this like all of this is not just like frivolity like you know it's it's not just you know just f- faking a relationship with somebody in a game like this actually impacts the way your characters fight together as well it doesn't have to be romantic but like if you improve that if you improve that stat then like put you know fighting next to each other gives you both bonuses and stuff right yeah it does but to that end this is not like as sophisticated of gameplay as XCOM by any means like right, it's a right. very that uh, I guess also like an asterisk on this is I'm not playing in the traditional way where if somebody dies they're dead forever. I'm playing that's, in the th- that's fallen out of favor. That's only for like really hardcore uh, kind of All folks. Right. Yeah. All right. I feel like less of a fake then. Um, but like that said, like I mean the game would be much much harder if that were the case. And there is a mechanic they give you. Uh, it's it's woven into the storyline that there's this like weird time traveling deity that you are talking to that you're in connection with. Um, and they implement that in the gameplay, whereas you can rewind turns, like if something bad happens. I have not interacted with that mechanic ever, because I've mm. never failed a mission in the game. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, it, it does, so there's not any sort of like deep challenge there. So, I, uh, so on one hand, I'm kind of worried that I'm not like playing at a hard enough difficulty that I'm like interacting with the system correctly. It's, it's kind of just, you just walk around the map and you beat things up until they die. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. On the whole, it's interesting. The game's interesting. I guess the uh, the third part that I haven't talked about is you basically can spend time walking around. You spend this time at this like school the majority of the time, and you can kind of walk around the school and interact with this and different systems they have there. Like you can do gardening. Uh, as David mentioned, you can invite people for tea. You can eat meals with your students. There's like mini quests that you can do for people that are basically just fetch quests that are very very mindless. Uh, you just like look at the if you just look at the map of where the icon is that popped up. You can fast travel there, pick up whatever it is, fast mm-hmm. travel back to the person, hand them the thing. <laughs> like that, that's how uh, deep the mechanics are in this game. So I guess after describing this game out loud, it's not a very like well put together game in, in the sense of it uh, being like something like XCOM on that scale, I guess. Uh, but I'm still playing a lot of it, so it's not completely yeah. like a, a mess or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I am impressed by is, like, very early in the game, like, within the first half an hour or so, you're you're given the option where you pick which house you want to side with. There's three different houses, and you know, like, nothing about, like, the character that you're siding with or who who's in that, like, house. So it's interesting that they give you that decision up front and point blank. And the thing that's impressive about it is each house has, like, maybe eight to ten students in it. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're all very well fleshed out. You know, they're all yeah. very, like, distinct characters. Um, like like the the stereotypes that I was mentioning before, you know, like somebody who works out a whole bunch, and everybody has a tragic backstory, of course. Yeah, um, well, like they're but, like they're they're at that school because their families are like torn apart by war, and they're all like generals and stuff, and always like away at different battles and stuff. Possibly, yes, yeah, that's <laughs> a good amount of them, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, just, I, I don't know, I don't know much this, about about the series. You know, I've only played a few hours of three houses, but that's, that, that's what I cleaned. <laughs> yeah. And this is my first fire emblem game too. So yeah. there could be like a lot of things that I'm missing out on playing it. Like it, I know the similar thing would be true if I came into like a metal gear solid game. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, lukewarm <clears throat> review hesitant thumbs up. It's, 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 it's filling space. If you need to sink some hours into something, then <laughs> yeah. certainly an option. <laughs> yeah. Or might I pitch to you actual XCOM? So I was going to, we can segue into this. I was going to get that game, but I had another friend who was playing it who was saying that the game was like super buggy and oh. like kind of unplayable at a certain point. And the bugs he was bringing up was saying that he would have items in his inventory that would just like vanish. And it was like unfixable bugs. Bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I have seen lots of complaints that it's buggy. I have experienced the normal amount of bugginess for an XCOM game. Um, in in my experience, um, but never something game breaking or never having something uh, disappear on me. Okay, but I, you are I, I that is something that I've heard from other people as well. Hmm. Just so not that, experience myself. That basically made me back off until there's like a patch update for it. Uh. Yeah. Huh. Um, I mean, so that sounds like a segue. Uh, so I will go go go, go to you, Dennis. Uh, you don't have yeah. to start with XCOM Chimera, but if you don't, you're going to sabotage my segue. Yeah. So <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy careful. to okay, okay. start there. 
So one of the things I love the most about XCOM and, and XCOM games is the feeling of turning the tide where you start out, it feels like against insurmountable odds and there comes a point, you know, you're on your back foot, you're on your back foot until finally you're like, aha, I'm, I'm feeling competent now. I'm feeling like I'm equipped well. I'm actually starting to win decisively. Um, and then it um, becomes a lot less about just surviving and more about kind of going on the offensive. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have hit that point uh, in Chimera Squad. Okay. I have basically the, the structure of the game is that there are three crime syndicates or, or factions in City 31 <clears throat> that may or may about not be responsible for kind of the, the plot MacGuffin or device that you're you're chasing down. And you have to choose in random order which ones you go after. And you like pick one, you take it down, you pick the next one, you take it down, etc. So I've I've taken down the first one and that took everything I had. And towards the end it was just like I was I was lucky to get out with one person alive uh, mm. on some mission. So it was, it was, it brutalized me like XCOM does. Um, and then I, I picked the next um, organization to go after. And I think there's some combination of, it felt like the difficulty reset because I was earlier in the uh, investigation and I had powerful enough soldiers and learned the game well enough um, that I just started steamrolling people. Hmm. So I've, I've hit that point of, you know, it feels like I've turned the tide. It feels like the second organization that I'm, uh, I'm going after, you know, doesn't stand a chance and I'm, I'm finishing missions without taking any damage. Um, which if you remember from last time, that is, that's kind of the way, what you got to shoot for in XCOM two, but <laughs> taking damage is, is very common in Chimera squad. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of back to um, really having decisive victories with, with healthy troopers. Um, and that feels good. I'm I'm almost finding myself jonesing for like I, I really hope as I get further in this investigation the difficulty ramps up again, like I really I I, I want to get put back on my back foot as yeah. it were, um, and if if you know the if the first third of the game is that back foot feeling and then the next two thirds are me just stomping. Uh, you know, that's, you, you need to feel like you're pressing against something. Yeah. yeah. I want to, I want to feel like I'm earning it, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I you know, I, I'll report back on, on how well it kind of takes you through that loops. It, it would be really cool if you have kind of with each faction, uh, kind of a mini loop of that, like that, that oh, kind yeah. of distills what I love at the macro level of XCOM into something that, that can be, you know, contained multiple times in one campaign. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and we'll see how that goes. I, I think there's also an interesting dynamic of, um, as people learn the game, what faction you choose to go after first might affect how difficult your experience is or how difficult even the factions are. Uh -huh. I've heard some people say like, you know, you'll, you'll get enemies or encounters. It's or difficulty levels. If you face a faction second or last versus if you, uh, face it first that are, are different. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. Um, I will also say the the characters um, uh, by by which I mean the fact that the game has them <laughs> is, <laughs> the, the, the is characters endearing. that are not just your advisors. Exactly, um, and they they do the same thing that XCOM two did. I can't remember how much XCOM one did it. I think I think they did, where um, just between missions, as you're like kidding it out stuff and and making purchases and upgrading, there will be little segments of banter. Um, and those are really fun because they have more fleshed out personalities in the game. Hmm. Um, so my, my favorite so far has been a series where um, your comms officer, Whisper, so he's, he's not in the field with you, but he's kind of the guy that's giving you all your briefings and missions and stuff, um, is just obsessed with like doing routine comms checks to make sure everything's working. Okay. And everyone just gives him shit and fucks with him. And <laughs> he's there's one with, uh, you have a sectoid on your team and, and he's like, uh, no, I can understand you, but it's because I'm reading your mind, not because the comms are working. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? No. Uh, and it's, oh, so it's they're just, they're just hilarious. bullying this nerd. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, and it's it's fantastic, and I'm here for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> uh, so that that's been fun, and I've been enjoying Chimera Squad. Uh, yeah. So that's that's the update I'll give there. Cool. Uh, any any other questions or things you were hoping to hear about? I mean, not personally. Yeah. It's. I mean, it, it. It's. It's bad that it feels like it's getting too easy for you. I mean, I forget. Like you can't. You can't change your difficulty partway through, right? Um, that's a good question. You can't change it partway through and get credit for winning on that difficulty. Gotcha. Okay. 
um so that that has been a thought in my mind of like i i uh if, if the difficulty doesn't ramp back up my focus will go towards kind of crushing through as fast as i can so i can start again on a higher difficulty yeah. and there's there's plenty of room upwards to go mm -hmm. uh, i can't remember if i if i mentioned last time they found a way to make iron man more difficult oh. um, so <laughs> they they now have uh iron man runs uh, obviously is, is the XCOM staple where it, it saves after literally everything you do so there's no takesies backsies um and then they have on top of that now a hardcore option where uh if you fail a single mission you lose the game entirely. So even if you get to a point where, you know, you can lose a mission and still be ahead enough that you can keep things under control, yeah. um, which is definitely a tactical decision sometimes in the old XCOMs. Mm -hmm. um, this is literally like, no, you have to win everything every time. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's the upgraded Iron Man. Um, we'll, we'll see if I mess around with that. Well, I, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I'll probably want to get through this, uh, in some kind of Iron Man form, yeah, uh, and then and then uh, this has reignited my interest to go back and, and mess around with uh, XCOM two. That was going to be going to be my next question. Are you going to like? I was going to ask if you were going to go back to XCOM two to like exercise any bad habits you might have developed from the different way that Chimera Squad works. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like I know I'm I'm developing bad habits um, that I will find out about as I get back into XCOM two. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Uh, so that's that's fun. Nice, cool. Chimera Squad. Uh, the other, yeah, Chimera Squad. Uh, the other two games that I've been playing are from the Steam World universe. Ooh. So oh, nice. uh, and these I've been playing with Luke and Milo. It's been a blast. Um, finished Steam World Quest, uh, which is the the kind of Slay the Spire ish game. Cool. Um, that was a very satisfying conclusion just from a story standpoint. Like they, they told a really fun, good story was engaging through to the end, mm -hmm. um, and, and stuck the landing. And, and so and Luke was on board with that. Yeah, that, that was, I think that's part of what I, what I liked is like, you know, knowing that I am playing with a bunch of people who their, their only interaction is the story mm -hmm. that enchanting card names as they see the moves, like, okay. And, the, by the way, Luke and Milo are now playing, you know, in the backyard, like running around <laughs> and you're like cyclone slash hot iron at each other and, <laughs> and all that kind of thing, nice. uh, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, so they, they, I was glad they stuck the landing on that front because that's the, you know, is, is super important for playing with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's, uh, it's still, you know, a little bit more simple than um, something like Slay the Spire. I tried going back. There's a new game plus mode and there's a, it's, I think it's called legend remix mode where it's more difficult enemies and they, um, dark Souls style, like change up where certain enemies show up mm -hmm. and the number that show up and everything. Um, I played a little bit of that and got to a point where it's like, okay, clearly I just need to do some grinding to be ready for this. And I, I'd, I'd rather not grind. Yeah. Um, so I think we'll be focusing on Steam World Heist next, which is the new thing I've been playing. Oh, cool! Yeah, so that's the uh, the side-scrolling turn-based stealth game, right? Yep. Um, and I I don't even know if I'd describe it as stealth. Um, Squad-based so it's, it's infiltration. Yeah. Yeah, so it, you are kind of breaching onto and clearing out a a spaceship at any given point. Um, and I would say, yeah, definitely more focused on tactics than stealth. Mm -hmm. Um but it is uh it's it's been kind of a good segue for for what to play um same universe same kind of tonality but at the same time very different setting right this last one was high fantasy uh this uh, excuse me quest was high fantasy heist is um you know firefly essentially mm -hmm. and uh, and that's a fun tone shift even within the same universe so that's uh that's interesting you, um, you know, on your turn, similar to another tactics game or an XCOM or, or what have you, you can move each of your characters a certain amount, uh, and then you can choose uh, an action for each of them. Usually that's just shoot, but you can, uh, depending on your equipment and abilities, do things like throw a grenade or, um, you know, what have you. Uh, and then there is a very rudimentary cover mechanic mm -hmm. where you are, you're basically either standing behind a barrel or you're not. The the thing that makes this game really interesting, and I, I forget, has anyone played it? I played a little uh, bit of it yeah, when it came out on iPad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the the thing that makes it super uh, unique for a tactics game is that once you once you kind of get in position to fire, you 
aim and fire and there is like wobble to your aim so you need to fire at just the right moment mm -hmm. to it's like uh, a to golf hit your like a golf meter kind of thing yeah which is freaking infuriating <laughs> like oh my god uh <laughs> nothing feels worse than to feel like you made all the right decisions and then hit x at the wrong time <laughs> like, so I have a gun. Um, and, uh, you know, that that's probably what I've been uttering a lot of uh, a lot in front of. The <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the, one of the characters has like a, a sight. And so there's like a little line that you can you can see. And um, I don't know if all or just some of the shots bounce. Uh, so you can do like cool ricochet tricks to get behind uh, the cover that people might be hiding behind mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But anything other than point blank gets really, really dicey, especially if you're trying to hit a headshot, yeah. um, which is an element of skill that I can appreciate. Um, but I'll remind you, I'm playing these uh, SteamWorld games on Google Stadia. Oh, right. And oh, so ooh. anything, yeah. yeah, anything that requires precision and timing um there have been there have been times where it's just noticeable like okay things are chugging a bit i've got a bad connection mm -hmm. but even when that's not the case it's in the back of your mind that maybe you do well it's your it's You're, a uh, it's a version of your uh guitar hero um exactly crt yes. problem right <laughs> exactly so that's that's been really frustrating um a, a really frustrating layer to what's otherwise been a very fun game mm -hmm. um and i will say it has it has led to some very tense moments and some triumphant like yes when <laughs> when you do hit that shot that feels impossible yeah um and i'm i'm wondering if as characters get more powerful that won't become less and less of an issue mm -hmm. which is why i was curious if anyone's played a significant amount of it no not a significant um, amount yeah, did you did you have a, a similar experience on the iPad, or was it pretty? Was the fact that you were kind of live on the device um, helpful? I mean, I it, it was helpful. Um, anytime I was like off just slightly, it was just due to my dumb meat hands. So yeah, it's yeah. not you know I, I I didn't notice the, the the like the timing being especially slippery for me. So um, it's also it's also very cute that you can knock off people's hats yes um and then and then collect them and wear them yourself <laughs> <laughs> um it would be adorable if it wasn't like if it didn't happen every time you just missed that headshot yes. <laughs> like that's uh it, i guess a, a small consolation <laughs> is uh, is you get their hat instead of the damage um but yeah so that's been fun uh the the cutest thing that's happened uh, on the Luke and Milo watching front is, you know, we, we always tell them be good encouragers and we encourage them to, you know, like chant or cheer people on. And so there was, you know, a shot that was difficult and they kind of, they kind of know the drill for, for how this works. <laughs> and so I'm like trying to really focus in and get this shot lined up. And suddenly Milo starts going, go daddy, go, go daddy, go. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> made me jump. <laughs> that sounds very distracting actually. Yeah. Oh, super distracting. Um, but, but adorable. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, what we've transitioned into, uh, and, and, um, after that, gosh, we've got steam world dig. Uh, I think it's the second one. Yeah. No, steam world so dig and a... steam world dig too. Um, although so mm -hmm. you're playing them in reverse order, I guess that's kind of true. Yeah. <laughs> Man, steam world dig uh, too yeah. is a really good platformer. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I remember you talking about it and remember it getting high praise, uh, and I had a great experience with the first one mm -hmm. on uh, and Vita. Yes. Yeah, Vita. Uh, I was about to correct myself and say PSP, but what, what world is that? <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, uh, so that that is that is me. Very cool. Uh, so you got Chimera Squad, SteamWorld Quest, and SteamWorld Heist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, David, round us out. What uh, what you been playing? Sure. Um, nothing too new this time around. Um, I've just been continuing on with um, oh Fallout seventy six. Cool. Um, finally got enough merit badges to get my uh, extra large backpack. Uh, from <laughs> Getting the, in the most the, the most valuable resource of all inventory space. Yes. Yes. Without a doubt. <laughs> um. So I can now actually move, uh, you know, faster than a brisk walk now. Cool. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, you know, other than that, I've I've gone back into uh, the actually following uh, the main storyline, or I guess 
now it's technically sort of the the pre-main storyline, uh, which is basically I've discovered a cure or a inoculation against the zombie plague. Okay. So you know I can now keep it from you know going farther. But I still need to wipe out the existing plague. And so I'm um, now basically tracking down um, everything I need to uh, launch a nuclear missile. Jesus. At the, um, yeah, at the <laughs> uh, basically like main nest of the Scorch Beast. Wow. That's just, that, <laughs> I don't know. The fact that you have to launch a nuke in a Fallout game it seems ridiculous to me. That's, yeah, yeah, it seems it seems canon to me. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like the, like the games are kind of about how fucked up of a thing that is to do to somebody. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind kind of mixed. I mean, the thing that does, I don't know. I guess make it more. I suppose you could say, um, appropriate to this particular setting mm-hmm. is that the. Um, Oh, uh, like uh, presidential uh, uh, bunker is in West Virginia. Okay. I mean, in in the real world as well, you know. In yeah. uh, I forget what the um, uh, what the resort is, but so a lot of that's kind of um, playing into like you exploring. Um, Oh, uh, that presidential bunker, and then that kind of sect of the enclave. Okay. So it does at least, uh, um, you know, have some good connections to, uh, you know, to the setting, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And it's also interesting from kind of a change up to the storyline because um, that's an area that's almost completely untouched by the. Um, by the apocalypse that that seems so backwards to me that seems like one of the ways it's like one of the first places you would nuke <laughs> if you could yeah Wait, what? what the west virginia area i mean if that's where the president's so, bunker is oh i see all right yeah so i think the plot line is one i think strictly speaking it's maybe supposed to be a secret but then also it's that's an area that was um shortly before the war completely automated Mm-hmm. So huh. basically, the robots have been like tending the the various gardens and you know keeping the resort immaculate and all that stuff for a uh, hundred okay. years. All right. So I mean, there is some justification. I think mostly it just makes a uh, you know interesting setting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think it's really cool picking West Virginia for a setting for a video game. Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, yeah, they and. I think I've t- maybe talked about this some when I, f- uh, first time I played it, but they have some really, um, good, some, maybe the best I've seen in a Fallout game in terms of having very distinct, uh, biomes. Uh, you basically, you start out in kind of, a, a forested area that's, I guess, sort of what I think most people probably think of as West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, then kind of the, uh, there's a region that's, you know, much more mountainous, kind of the, you know, Rocky Mountains type area. There's a region that's just, um, oh, uh, that's basically just like, uh, bogs and swamp and things like that. Yeah. Like, like uh, down toward in- Kentucky kind of deal. Yeah, exactly. And then, then you get into there's a region that is all kind of coal country, so the entire thing is just choked with ash, and yeah. you know is huge industrial things, things mm-hmm. like that. Probably. And then my good favorite, and I don't know, I'm assuming this actually is a thing in West Virginia, although it's not one I'm familiar with. Uh, kind of the highest level area is actually referred to as the Cranberry Bog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's a bunch of like mutated cranberry bog um, combined with like certain areas that have, you know, been irradiated enough that the plants have morphed into kind of pseudo jungle. Okay. Uh, so it's just, it's very weird um, area. Um, also something I've found 
kind of funny uh just in terms of like emergent gameplay is the sort of pe- uh, the ultimate enemy in the game are the scorch beast which are these giant mutant bats that are you know kind of spread the zombie plague mm-hmm. and i guess for reference probably their body is about the size of like a death claw okay um, but then they also have, you know, huge bat wings on top of that. So they're just massive. And um I've had a couple of just very entertaining run-ins with them. Uh they tend to the way the physics engine works, uh, since they're you know flying off and when you fight them, uh often when you kill them, the corpse just goes flying off and you know, will fly, I don't know, you know, h- multiple hundreds of meters. So at one point, I'm just, you know, I, you know, walk into kind of this bunker, you know, shack area looking around for loot. Um, and apparently someone on like the other side of the map killed one of these things. <laughs> and all of a sudden the corpse, like right as I step in the door, just like comes crashing down <laughs> on the, right outside the door. It's turn around. It's got like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, let's uh, deal with that feel like this is a sign yeah uh similarly i i'm specced very very heavily into stealth so you know i'm extremely good at it and so i had a instance where one of these creatures just landed right next to me on the ground and just completely didn't notice me (laughs) (laughs) and so it's just kind of you know back away slowly back away slowly (laughs) this doesn't um, have to be a thing exactly um, I think my favorite, though, new enemy is definitely uh, there's giant hermit crabs that instead of a shell, basically inhabit uh, half of a hatchback. Oh, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, that was one of the sentences that I had to hear and then rehear in my head and then hear again before it made sense. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. So they've they've somehow, you know, torn off the front half of the hatchback and then kind of, you know, backed up so that it's it serves as their shell. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that when you first see it, it's again kind of like your reaction. It's like, what the heck? Yeah. But then, like, it actually does work really yeah. well. When you first see it, you don't see it, and then you see it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, there's also uh, giant mutant sloths, um, which are kind of entertaining. Okay. And horrifying. So, um, other than that, they, in that order, um, you know, it's it's sort of an all of the above thing. I feel like a regular sloth <laughs> is like ninety percent claw. So, <laughs> yep, yeah. Um, other than that, they uh, they really lean heavily into kind of the the cryptid um, angle. So, I know there's at the very least there's uh, mothmen's, uh, sheep squatches. Mm-hmm. Um, Flatwoods monster, monsters and Grafton monsters. Cool. Which are, uh, oh, and also Wendigos. That's kind of out of place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are Wendigos more of a PNW thing? Eh, I suppose so. They they basically end up being kind of the uh the fast zombie to the uh oh to the ghoul slow zombie. Hmm. Okay. But yeah. Um so yeah, yeah, I mean, uh you know, a lot of interesting things. Um you know, been uh running around doing doing a bit more of the um oh, kind of side event like uh you know, multiplayer quests which are um a lot of fun. Um in particular, there is one um the enclave you eventually help um bring back online a orbital bombardment um satellite okay and so there's a quest where you basically you know have to rig up um you know sensors to like triangulate a target and then just back up and watch it just you know smack down one of these scorch beasts huh. <laughs> Which is, you know, very very satisfying. Maybe again gets a little bit to the I'm pretty sure theme of this is supposed to be super weapons are bad. Yeah, I can see that. 
but you know, that's, that's life. Uh, people continue to actually be, uh, really pretty awesome. Um, people the, like NPCs or people that you're playing with incidentally, because it's an online game. Well, I mean, yeah, so both, I, I was meaning, uh, like actual players, mm -hmm. um, have, you know, end up being really nice. Um, the sort of ultimate event is when you drop a nuke, um, it basically kicks up a, you know, this huge, uh, kind of dust cloud okay. that over this massive section of the map, it, um, you know, you have dramatically reduced visibility. It, it kind of looks like the radiation storm. If you've played fallout four, okay. Um, you know, everything's high radiation. All of the enemies um, that are normally there get, like, automatically set to, uh, you know, end game levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a bunch of, like, the Scorch Beast and Scorch Zombie enemies. And so it's super, super chaotic, very dangerous, um, you know, just a v very, very difficult. Um, and, you know, ha had an instance where basically you know, went in and was trying to, uh, oh, kill a legendary enemy, which these are basically, uh, enemies that always drop, um, end game level loot. Okay. And, uh, you know, ultimately got most of the way down, but then got, uh, got killed. And so had to respawn and some other players, uh, you know, took it out, mm -hmm. but they then, uh, like, sat there and made sure I found the corpse so I could loot it before they uh, moved on. Oh, cool. Yeah. So like, you know, think things where it's like, all right, you know, you know, people being, uh, you know, pretty cool. Nice. So yeah. So um, yeah, overall just, um, you know, my, my rating continues to be, you know, it's, it's a really interesting combination of, you know, it has some major flaws, but it's still a Fallout game, and you know the Fallout series is great enough that that can overcome a lot of faults. Mm -hmm. And, and definitely seems like the yes, um, <laughs> wow, <laughs> and definitely seems like they're moving in the right direction. So cool. Sounds like they've listened to feedback at the very least, giving a yeah, giving some more substance. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 this yeah, is the most definitely. I have ever heard about any reason for anything happening, and and you know Fallout seventy six. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's always had a plot. It's just always been incredibly depressing and poorly told. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I will yeah. correct the thing I said. I I said that uh, Wendigos. I thought they were primarily in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Wendigo are um, a myth associated with. Uh, Algonquins, right? Yeah, yeah. Na Native tribes who spoke uh, Algonquin languages, which is like primarily like French Canada uh, over into the Maritimes. Like it extends like west over to Alberta, it looks like. And then like down into like Michigan, and it looks like there's like a patch around West Virginia. So I, did, oh, okay. I didn't want to like <laughs> to, to inadvertently be ignorant if I had an opportunity to look that up. Sure. No, we, no. We did not pay attention during until dawn. <laughs> well, I was. I, I, I mean, the, the the reason that I thought the the reason I thought it was Pacific Northwest was because like that that ski lodge that they're in kind of seems you know like Rocky Mountains kind of deal. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I just I didn't associate that. Um, I I guess that I thought that my, was more of a more of a PNW thing. But. My my favorite memory of for dawn, and this this is total tangent but uh you know i don't actually like core games but i like watching like let's plays of them uh -huh. mm -hmm. and the the let's play i watched you know was a group of guys and and like very first episode right at the end right at the beginning one of the dudes like what if it's windigos <laughs> <laughs> man i need to i need to stream that game again actually um that was one of the first games i streamed like back that was like winter of 2015 or something like that shit guys i've been streaming for like five years but that that is very funny yeah. just like spoil it at the beginning yeah, yeah. cool um anything besides fallout 76 um nope nope that's it cool multiplayer now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then you kindly answer it uh dennis what did you ask the nice people 
Yeah, I wanted to hear about that sweet, sweet video game ink. So I asked uh, if you had to get a video game tattoo, what would you get, where and why? And of course, if you already have one, what's the story behind it? Yeah. Um, and I'll get us started here with Jonathan, who writes, maybe some Iron Banner artwork from Destiny 2, shoulder or bicep, maybe. Keep it simple. And I have to I have to look all of the, I have to look a lot of these up because I don't know what the Iron Banner <laughs> is. Uh, um, that's it's their um, it's a multiplayer event, right? Mm -hmm. It's like their uh, it's like it's like their you know, battle arena kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll, I'll, that's, I'll never... that's in particular. That's the um, kind of hardcore mode. That's like event. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It oh, I see that. Oh, yeah, that like that that could plausibly be something that is not related to a video game. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. yeah De Destiny Two has that kind of level of uh, iconicness that can still be subtle. Mm -hmm. um, I, I the one time I've ever had that moment of like, oh, video games shirt in the wild was I was at a baby shower, and some dude had the warlock class symbol on a t shirt. Ooh, um, yeah. no no other explanation nothing like it would no one who wasn't playing destiny 2 would get that so i can see <laughs> icons from from that um yeah. game in general being a good fit did you like pull him aside and say i know what you do yeah <laughs> <laughs> no we we got at, I, I think we wound up adding each other and then never actually played together really <laughs> <Modern friendship. laughs> uh let, let's see david what does greg say Greg says, I guess I'd get my initials of GJP, talking back to the old days of entering my initials into arcade machine high score lists from my youth. People that's always actually pretty good. People always assume that's why I have ass written across my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ben, what does Nathan say? Nathan says, uh, for four Dark Souls tattoos. Uh, a summon sign, a stylized bonfire, the warriors of sunlight face, and the firekeeper from Dark Souls 3. Each of them uh, were weight loss gold rewards. Oh, Thanks. congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've done well taking something away from your body, so add something to it. Yeah. A nice little, little logic no, there. Those are good. The the summon sign's great. I, I, got, um, I got Gary a t-shirt with a summon sign on it. I feel like those nice. glyphs are really attractive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Dennis, what does David say? David says, I've wanted the soul eater rune from the first Suikoden on my right wrist since I turned 18. I'm not usually superstitious, but I've been afraid to commit considering the rune is cursed, causing the bearers loved ones to die horribly. I mean, at least Ooh, doesn't yeah. affect you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting quandary. Hmm. I've got kind of a similar one when it gets around to mine. Not that it'll surprise anybody. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Ollie says, I've never really thought about getting a tattoo, but as a guy who has had eight knee operations, I could go for a Shadow of Colossus weak spot sigil on my knees. That is very clever. Yeah. Very clever. Also yeah. very painful. That is one of the, the uh, most painful places to get a tattoo. I was like, right on the bone, right? need to glow in the dark version of it too <laughs> <laughs> you can do, can that. You do that is yeah, that a thing yeah, yeah there's uh, there's uv active, shit. UV active so light. all those annoying like stick person memes where the people use glow sticks and then dance around in the dark right now um there's people out there that can just be like yeah uh amateurs i, have I mean no idea. if you really want to you could just you know in, uh insert some tritium up in there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean if you wanted to reduce your lifespan maybe would tritium but you get so many likes as it, while true, you still live yeah, yeah so it depends because the there are different uh, isotopes of it well the thing is it's it can't penetrate the skin <laughs> but if you put However, it under your skin the problem is i don't know if you'd put it enough under yeah under your skin that that might be a problem yeah yeah it's like oh i just i just got a tritium tattoo over all of my lymph nodes and now i'm dead <laughs> um <laughs> let's see um david what does warren say warren said i have three and have plans for more the assassin's creed logo because it used to be my favorite game uh franchise fox logo from Metal gear solid because Metal gear solid three and five are in my top 10 games of all time and 
Kodokan from Mortal Kombat because he is an interesting character and has a really cool design. I plan to get my entire left leg covered with video game tattoos, but I keep spending money on other stuff, like video games. <laughs> mm, the quandary. <laughs> nice. good. He's got a picture of the actual uh, third tattoo. Which yeah, is awesome. that's really good. That's a, there, there's really good like shadow work on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Ben, what does Jason say? Jason says, I've wanted to get the Halo of the Sun symbol from Silent Hill series. Sorry if I sniped you, Cole. No worries. Uh, this has <laughs> been my favorite horror series since the original Silent Hill 1 when I played it at its launch. Uh, I think I was 13, maybe. Uh, that game pr- uh, proved that video games can create fantastic atmosphere and hinted at greater things to come in the narrative and suspense. Also, that symbol is really fucking cool. It's really good. Um yeah. They're like different um they're they're like they're different versions of it with different intricacies too. So I was like about to gl- say, yeah. Yeah, different glyphs like all the way down to just like a couple of abstract circles and lines. So you could really you could really choose if you would like to. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. ch- choose which one you want to get depending on how long you want to be under the needle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how long you want to explain to friends. Yeah. Well, you know. Or you know, just be like, "Oh, it's occult stuff." Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that i mean that that would have been one of mine but it's pretty pretty obvious i'll I'll defer to another one do not worry (laughs) um (laughs) let's see uh dennis what does steve say uh steve has a short answer and a quick video and it's awesome he says Mm -hmm. mega man because it's sweet and the games have been a lifelong passion um he doesn't just have mega man he has an entire sleeve and then some of mega man characters yeah that's really cool i I like that dude yeah it's like all the like all the bosses uh kind of rendered in cartoon in their nice fun capcom cartoon form on on his arm and then it looks like I, I, I'm not watching, I haven't watched the video, but it looks like he has Mega Man X on his chest, like mm-hmm. point, pointing the buster, uh, the X buster out. Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> really cool. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Dulce says, ooh, awesome question. I have the Triforce on my left wrist uh, because, uh, basically because I love the balance of the three shards, power, wisdom, and courage. Uh, and it's there to remind me to strive for that in everything I do. Uh, I also have Uka Uka and Aku Aku, the Tiki nice. Mask from Crash Bandicoot on my <laughs> pelvic region. I wanted to have this done as their personalities match some parts of mine. The good part is caring and protective, and the evil side has a very short temper and, and he's impatient. I have PS4 controllers on my right forearm. Uh, they have angel and devil wings and are super cute. This was a gift from my husband, and I love it so much. Uh, as it reminds me of when we were on a long distance distance relationship and our way to spend time together was playing video games on the PS4. That's very sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, Super with the tri- cool. again with the Triforce, like that's just a Sierpinski triangle. That's a symbol that's older, basically as old as humanity. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, again, <laughs> like with a lot of these, the thing that sticks out, like the, the thing that I lean to is, is this plausibly not nerd shit? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's funny because in martial arts basically the the triforce symbol is a really important symbol for like footwork uh-huh. like huh. that's uh you know a lot of basic footwork particularly in weapon arts basically yeah. um you know can be plotted on that symbol yeah but like the Sierpinski triangle forgive me if i'm incorrect but like that is like an example of a primitive fractal right a self referential yeah, self referential yeah. shape. Oh, huh. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's it's one of those along with like the golden ratio. Not swastika, like but you know, you know what I mean. That's the, uh the Hindu symbol swastika or the Native right, American yeah. symbol swastika, yeah. Yeah. That shows up in like almost every culture at some point. Mm-hmm. Huh. Geometry. It's good. <laughs> uh let's see here. Uh David, what does Wade say? Which says, something Dark Souls related. I was thinking a minimalist bonfire on the back of my calf. The series has become very near and dear to me. And it's something that I always find myself revisiting. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're in good company here. Uh, ben, what does Jeremy say? Jer- Lindsay says. Oh, what, yeah. What, do, what does Lindsay say? 
Ben? <laughs> I've been working on a cartoonish madness from Dark Souls in my spare time, adding to it little by little. Uh, I also made a tribal calamite, which will go down my arm, uh, and the tail will curl around onto my hand. Ooh. Hopefully, hopefully when quarantine is lifted, I can get one of these. Nice. I didn't intentionally skip you, Lindsay. I just, my, my eye went to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he totally yeah. did. <laughs> what is a calamite? Calamite. So those are both bosses from the DLC. Um, oh. so Manus is like a, like a big beast kind of guy, uh, just kind of like overrun with, uh, the humanity, uh, which is a, mm. you know, basically overrun by the abyss. Um, and Kalamit is the last of, at the time that you see him, the last of the eternal dragons, uh, it's an optional boss fight. Okay. Uh, cool. Which is, uh, can, and Kalamit is actually like a design pulled forward from the Kingsfield series um from gyra and that just like seeth is pulled forward from uh from kingsfield oh, nice. nice yeah um let's see here <laughs> uh dennis what does jeremy say okay now jeremy says the king of all cosmos because the king of all cosmos yeah. uh and I, I read this and i'm like yep i would totally believe that the king of all cosmos has a king of all cosmos tattoo <laughs> <laughs> it's the only one that's on his face <laughs> it, is, it is a tattoo of him on him. What's uh, the what's the line from Mitch Hedberg? I want to get a tattoo of myself all over my body except taller. <laughs> Damn, I didn't mean to steal a Mitch Hedberg bit. Uh, <laughs> Griffin writes, I have a pixel black mage from Final Fantasy on my forearm. It's been one of my favorite series. Nice. Nice. Love the black so mage design. This, this is just apropos of nothing, but it really, I really dislike the 3d black mage designs what's up just just the whole like or at least the the versions that are like oh in order to look like black mage we need to you know somehow have the person be care be wearing like a gimp mask or whatever <laughs> it's like hmm. i was i'm pretty sure that was just supposed to be shadow like yeah yeah well then you get like something like final, uh vv from final fantasy 9 and vv's great yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but but just you know, just that's a cartoony enough style that they just have him, you know, have his whole face be in shadow except for the eyes. I'm struggling to find a black mage in a gimp mask, David. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't going to call you on that. I just uh... <laughs> turn, turn safe search off. Yeah. Which um, which uh, it might be. Oh no! Here we go. No nope. thing. This this uh, I found it. It also follows the scrolls to sexy uh, rule. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I gotcha. <laughs> did we invent the scrolls to sexy or is that? I believe I believe we did. <laughs> uh let's see here. Uh this was me, I assume. So David, what does Philip say? Sorry, I was uh about to link my proof, but uh <laughs> <laughs> Philip says Edward Gorey style rendition of a giant rat biting into a teeny weeny Dr. Jonathan Reed vampire. Uh with the caption, This is despicable as a <laughs> thought bubble, because the rat is thinking to itself. Hmm. Because turnabout is fair play. <laughs> I've always thought. <laughs> Yeah, that would be like um oh, so from from Vampire. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know that's how you uh, like I don't think you pronounce vamp vampire any different when it's spelled like that, but whenever I want to say I am talking about the Don't Nod game from 2018, I always say Vampire instead of Vampire. But yeah, it feels more right that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so let's do ours. Uh for me the Halo of the Sun has always been pretty, you know, pretty attractive, but that has already been taken uh by somebody in the responses here. So for like a Silent Hill one, the Seal of the Metatron um actually predates that in the series. Uh Ooh. and looks very similar. Um it's got the uh you know, it, it is still a circular design with um really kind of fluid runes inside of it, uh which is which is real fun um I, I like that it looks a little bit more primitive than uh than the uh than the halo of the sun although it which is have funny because those... good i was gonna say metatron feels like a transformers thing but oh <laughs> not, not <laughs> or, quite like the same. or like a biblical thing you know sure sure yeah um another are there one... many trons in the bible what's that so are there many trons in the bible like like like, like, like metatron that's like a like the high holy arch archangel right i think so 
Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, it's like a Catholic thing. I know, I know it from dogma. Time, essentially, time to go down the a Google, Google hole. Expanded universe. <laughs> what, what's that? What's that? <laughs> it's in the EU. It's a biblical <laughs> expanded universe. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, no, just to think, you think, thinking more to games that mean a lot to me. Uh, so like uh, the 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 dark sign from Dark Souls would be pretty good. Although I've got the the whole like oh yeah that's a that's a curse symbol you know. Mm-hmm. So that like you know I I don't know if I'm that superstitious, but anyway, uh, the uh, the hunter's sign from uh, from oh gosh Bloodborne would be good too. Like I've got mm-hmm. like a decal of the hunter sign on my monitor. Like it's just a really good simple runic design. Although any anything that's like runic does you do risk kind of like maybe looking looking like a nazi to somebody who doesn't know exactly what you're referencing Uh, that's fair yeah um and then when i think of other stuff so we've got silent hill we have we have the soul series gotta do mist uh so probably the falling man um symbol which is kind of the uh you know one of the main symbols of mist you know the 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 stranger falling into the book of mist it's a very simple silhouette of a dude falling um or the symbol for uh riven from the uh you know from riven the sequel to mist which is the denis number for five but it is done in a really good like block kind of style i'll uh, put a link in here for you guys but um but i really like that again simple runic plausibly deniable (laughs) (laughs) that's good yeah plausibly deniable but those are mine i just uh it needs to be like all of those are games that have i don't know those games have affected my life uh they're mm-hmm. good <laughs> and uh let's see here david has has posted has posted some stuff has posted yeah, proof so, of at least one of them yeah uh, so uh yeah so i posted proof of like creepy gimp mask uh oh uh, <laughs> black mage so <laughs> i think nope. that that was from uh that was from oh uh, the realm reborn and this would be your tattoo right oh yeah no this would not be my <laughs> tattoo uh so i think uh it's a hard call um i really like the design of uh vicar amelia uh from uh bloodborne okay so i ac- actually posted uh a little earlier on like there's a lot of people that have designed some really cool um tattoo designs with her mm. Yeah, and she she she's she's uh, like a like a big um you know it's a big beast beast person but has like a, kind of almost looks like like flowing bandages and a face like her skull shape is like a wolf but she has like deer antlers. Think think the right. big bad wolf pretending to be grandma except like badass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh and, and um, it has a prominent like pendant that she uh, that she has. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um other than that, I really like, uh, kind of as we mentioned before, some of the occult-looking stuff. So, you know, any of the runes from uh, Bloodborne would be uh, really cool. Mm-hmm. Or um, there's a lot of um, oh, Cultist Simulator actually has a lot of really cool uh, designs for stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it's hard to go wrong with runes. Again, again, though, you don't want to accidentally look and not look like a Nazi. So mm-hmm. just have to just have to be careful. <laughs> just have to be. You want to really... intentionally look like a Nazi? <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, um, I'm gonna send you guys a picture of my little uh, little Bloodborne Hunters rune here. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Ben, how about you? Face tat of 50 Cent from 50 Cent Blood in the Sand. <laughs> Hell yeah, get that diamond skull. Get it back. Shoot down that chopper, man. 50 Cent Blood in the Sand is really good. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not like an A-plus game, but it is better than you would expect it to be. A-plus punchline, though. <laughs> um, is, is that your answer? It is. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, it. And Dennis, how about you? Yeah, so um, an easy one could be the uh, XCOM organizational symbol, kind of that badge mm-hmm. with Vigilo yeah. and Confido on it. Um, that's I think that's probably borderline uh, too identifiable. So my backup would be the uh, Fireflies icon from uh, The Last of Us. Oh, oh dang. Good, yeah. No, yeah. The Fireflies might be really good. 
Mm -hmm. I think that it's, it's so commonly um, done as like a spray paint thing. I'd want to like, it, it, I, I almost would want to make sure it wasn't done clean. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You need a little bit of that spatter around yeah, it. Yeah. Of a, a visual designers call it like a grimy style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, and and I, I'd have to look more to see how well the grimy style translates to tattoos, but that's where I'd want to go. Yeah. Um, the, like the, the, the aspect of this, I didn't answer was like location because, Oh I, yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I can't, I can never think of like, where where one of these would look good <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's like yeah whatever oh yeah it's just, it's just right that's on the forehead <laughs> yeah i mean I, ben's got the right idea <laughs> the <laughs> only acceptable answer yeah see so, yeah, you just, you just want to be just just show the confidence i ride with curtis come on show show the confido <laughs> uh yes and the vigilo vigilo I, i'm not sure that's latin i'm gonna go vigilo yeah go low why pay for a tattoo if you're not showing it all the time? True, true. Yeah, it's like so, you're losing money. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's why that's why I don't understand why people get like tattoos on their shoulder blade. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go through all that pain just for something I'll never see. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, they're, they're just... so what if, what if you were going to get? I feel like we need a follow up. What if you were going to get a knuckle tattoo? <laughs> I, I don't know knuckles? yeah oh yes. damn that's good yeah yes i'd be very up for that <laughs> uh cool well thank you everybody for uh writing in uh if you would like to participate in these go to facebook.com slash the level podcast watch for the prompts to go up on monday afternoons dennis thank you for putting up the prompts mm -hmm. yeah the end boss now it is time for the end boss where we talk about the things that are uh happening in the world of video games that are uh you know exciting to us let's say um dennis you've got something about vr yeah so there were some demos that uh came forth out of uh some sony research projects of full hand tracking vr um and it's it's like a funky looking controller thing but but a controller you hold in your hand nonetheless um, but, uh, it, it fully tracks like each finger, every joint, rotation of the thumb. Uh, and this was not applied in any kind of game world just yet, but was more a, a demonstration of, of what they are able to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so two implications. First off, you will be able to give the finger to people in VR, uh, soon enough. And, and God second knows off, I try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, second off, you will be able. Uh, there is a uh, kick-ass Naruto game uh, in the future, almost certainly. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is a little bit of a problem. I mean, I mean, it, it is something yeah. that that needs that needs to be solved. Not only do you have to have controllers that are ergonomic, but like the reason the Oculus Touch controllers have that weird little hoop is that they are looking for like the state of your thumb and your index finger specifically. Yeah. Yep. And I think the um, the demos I've seen of uh, Half Life Alex show that there's at least you know limited finger tracking um, yeah. on what you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, but this is like full hand um, and uh, is is a lot more mm -hmm. uh, responsive than I think what's been out before. So yeah. they they said in the demo they show some people um, you know picking up and playing with blocks with mm -hmm. it um and uh not much else to report yet this will not be the ps5's vr because they've already confirmed um that's kind of the kind of compatibility with uh with the existing systems but yeah, could be something unannounced move. yeah mm -hmm. something unannounced in the future mm -hmm. nice uh, it's good that people are trying to solve this problem mm -hmm. yeah i mean like so the quest it does have like hand and finger tracking just based on the cameras, but it's not really uh, used. It's not really used in any games. That's also well, it, not as like accurate as I would like it to be. But yeah, and when you get to that level of detail, it's like it's almost as important to have the haptic feedback as well. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I'm almost, I'm, I'm hoping or betting at some point there will be more of a glove kind of solution that, like, if you go to pick something up, you can clamp mm -hmm. a certain amount on it, and, and yeah. then the glove will stop you. That will be cool. Uh, but not there yet. This no, what is a good I, what, step in that direction. What I want is like a small piece of rice sized implant that I can get in each of my fingers that will provide, <laughs> provide the, I mean, I'm serious. That'd be really fun. Actually, uh, <laughs> I, that, that would, that would be good. Just build it in so you can feel it, you know, like, I don't know, 
like cat sure, Greta, sure right over there like she's got a little piece of rice uh injected in her so the vet can find her if she gets uh or, you know can identify her if she gets lost but i don't think it has a vibration function no but i mean you know it's a couple of years why would you waste it on a cat i would just like freak <laughs> it out for me i know what's happening she has no idea what that would be that so. that's how we get it to attack you for bits <laughs> <laughs> also also point of order by that you described a uh cat launcher i believe the term you're looking for was catapult uh... jesus Oh God! <laughs> I want to go flush myself down a toilet, David. <laughs> Both for hearing that and also for not thinking to say it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, I've got mine. Um, I will do uh, do my, my my stories here. Got two of them, although they both came from the same event uh, last week. Toward the end of the week, Microsoft did their you know presentation in lieu of announcing games at e3 kind of their own version of like a nintendo direct there were lots of things announced there that seemed pretty cool like assassin's creed valhalla might be neat uh but of particular interest to me were two games um that i will outline here so there's a video game called scorn that i've been following for several years um and it is uh caught my eye because it really uses the art style of hr giger uh you know just 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 runs wild with it as you know the 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 style for showing this weird like technosexual diaphanous you know hostile alien dreamscape kind and of thing to the game you're currently playing yes <laughs> which also has hr giger this one more kind of like leans into his fantasy art which is which is real cool to me um but the game dropped off the radar i figured oh yeah it's probably i probably became vaporware that's fine it require a lot of funding etc cetera, etc cetera. but then like they just straight up announce hey scorn is coming it's going to be on you know pc and the whatever the next xbox is like xbox series x or whatever pc yeah it's going to be on pc let's say that um <laughs> and you know there's no release date but holy shit this project this project is still alive and like look at <laughs> look at that trailer you guys it looks badass uh yeah. so i'm excited for that very just like excited. disgustingly beautiful yes also disgustingly beautiful is another game that was uh revealed there uh so bloober team uh the team that made the layers of fear series did observer did the blair witch game uh they put up uh, a trailer at this event that for all the world would just ooh, everybody would have said oh this is a new silent hill game uh particularly because of the music this is a game called the medium uh that the you know that uses the music of akira yamaoka the composer and sound designer for silent hill um wow. and has a visual style of zidzla beksinski another painter in the vein of hr giger uh that has a similar nightmarish visual style so you have giger and you have beksinski dueling games with this particular style you guys everything's coming up cole <laughs> i am so excited about both of these i cannot tell you like i was I watching the view count for that event it was only you it was an event yeah, yep it was it was just me they mailed me a dvd and i was like okay i'll watch this and i was like oh yeah i understand why they did that this was made for me both of these mm -hmm. um yeah i i'm over the moon that both of these are coming down the pike because both of them look amazing uh man just like oh our visual style is beksinski and our music is akira yamaoka jesus Ta -da. <laughs> uh, but apologies for my profanity but wow i am so excited about this <laughs> so um uh, i will regain my composure but those are my stories <laughs> um let's see here uh david what uh what what, what you got for us yeah, so this was a, um, came across on uh, Hacker News, kind of a, I guess, technology demo slash proof of concept for the idea of a new approach to login, particularly for like a cell phone, uh -huh. where uh, instead of, you know, punching a number or drawing some shape or whatever, you basically play a short game. Hmm. Uh, so from the looks of it, it looks like it's, uh, you know, some sort of number game, uh, you know, maybe 
some sort of like really really uh simplified like sudoku or you know you know something like that yeah and apparently part of the um idea of it is one of the things you customize about the game is not just like your password that i guess maybe serves as the seed or something i i don't know they don't go into detail but you actually customize the rules of the game and so the idea is that even if someone watches you enter your password without knowing the rules of like why that's the sequence you're entering okay it's not apparent uh you know that doesn't give them much information in order to unlock it do they huh. have do they have metrics on how cryptographically sound that is like like well like what what is it measured in years like what is it i don't know if if i had to guess i think this is specifically to solve for like the low bar of like you know four digit uh you know cell phone passwords that sort of thing okay so i'm i think this is not meant to be something that's like high security it's more just meant to be kind of good enough and to you know also kind of get around the fact that the easiest way to like bypass a cell phone isn't you know often isn't to you know decrypt or whatever it's just a spy on the person yeah yeah okay huh so this is like social social engineering proof right yeah right so yeah so um you know just kind of a neat idea Mm -hmm. uh you know neat that someone spent their time you know coming up with some something uh kind of cool yeah uh something that i've run into and i don't know what kind of phones y'all have um in this like foreseeable future uh maybe the rest of our lifetimes where face masks might be a uh a factor in our lives uh Mm -hmm. facial recognition for unlock is dick wow yeah (laughs) yeah i have re i man i i have just man i really regret regret getting rid of a phone that has uh that has fingerprint unlock yeah, although <sighs> generally speaking, you shouldn't use fingerprint unlock because it's not covered under the Fifth Amendment. Oh, shit, yeah. But your face oh. is. Uh, yep. Huh, weird. Uh, actually, I don't know face. I know password is. Yes, because it's a piece of yeah, a piece of information that you would have to dis- d- divulge as testimony against yourself. But huh. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest. About the... Only thing I'm glad uh, came out of this, uh, you know, whole, you know, apocalypse we're having is the the face mask thing, both yeah. because it screws up facial recognition <laughs> and because, you know, I've always, uh, always liked the cyber, po- uh, cyber goth style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a new uh, I've got a new face mask showing up tomorrow because my handmade ones are all falling apart. Uh, guys, nice. I am terrible at sewing. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's that's so. That's one nice thing. Um, you know, a lot of PNGs plants have shifted over to uh, face mask production, among oh, other cool. things. Yeah. Um, and they actually sent all employees a little packet of uh of ones that they've made. That's, that's... a really good thing for them to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. B- BT Dubs regarding David's news story. I came up with this a while ago because I made witness puzzles as my password. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did, you put you put a uh, you put a background on. Yeah, and okay. it's like yeah, so it's like a two by two box password for the witness. Oh, cool! That's, oh, that's really fun. awesome. And actually. it would rotate, or or it would stay the same. Uh, it would stay the same. So yeah. I could always figure out what my password was, <laughs> even if I forgot it. <laughs> like, so even if this ends up not being cryptographically secure, I could see this being another step above. You know, like you know those email plugins that are like, hey, it's after ten p.m. You might be drunk. Do you want to send this? Like there's yeah. there, there's an official mm-hmm. like Google Google Labs thing where it's like hey answer these arithmetic problems. I could see this being one step beyond that where it's like hey solve this quick little puzzle for me please. So mm-hmm. yeah, I wonder if I wonder if they could get into one uh, you know figure out something to make it uh, uh you know like resistant to uh, rubber hose uh, decryption stuff. I don't know what that means. That's basically where they uh, uh, tell you, uh, give me the password, I'll quit hitting you with this rubber hose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so like, like there's you, cert- you... <laughs> yeah, there's, cer- there's certain um, cryptographic uh, uh, things that are designed to basically be torture proof where oh, you, so can't... You, you can't give it under duress. Right, exactly. Yeah. 
Huh. Yeah. No, I just like that. Like the, this article that Yelena just giving me, like just to like I have no idea what the hit bad problem is. So I'll be looking at stuff like this. It's been a while since <laughs> I, since I've been immersed in stuff like this. Once again, we are living in a cyberpunk uh, <laughs> uh, novel. Yeah, well, that, I, like that, like that, that used to be one of my like favorite parts about my old job was like I don't know, like it was boring and it was spiritually deadening to be a propagandist for tech companies <laughs> but it was fun to hear about like i don't know cool technologies and uh like specifically like security stuff so so hey. i like i i saw a uh a quote it was like uh you know someone interviewing gibson and you know a asked him uh you know why why all the you know him and the various other cyberpunk authors had such a pessimistic uh view of the future I was just basing it on like what it felt like to live in the eighties, right? Well, and his his answer was we we felt we were being um uh, optimistic. <laughs> yeah, optimistic by speculating that humanity had a future. Yep. <laughs> God. I hear his new book, Gibson's new book, is actually really good. I need to Yeah, that's what I've heard. Put that up to my list. Uh hey Ben, you got a story? Yeah, uh, so Cyberpunk, the ESRB rating came out, and so it uh, divulged a few things that are in the game. <laughs> namely, what I wanted to, namely, what I wanted to mention is there is a genital creator in the character creator portion of the game. Uh, you, you can adjust butt, breast, frontal genitals, either gender. Yeah. It's all. It's all up for grabs. Like, you, what I can tell, <laughs> not mutually exclusive. Yeah, no, like, like you, do, you don't have to, like, define a gender. You can, I mean, forgive my crassness here, pick your pieces and parts. And, like, that is <laughs> that is just your character, which is, like, a part of cyberpunk that I'm, like, way into, which is, like, I don't know, man. We can, like, modify everything about us. Why not that? <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if there's like a suicide option where you just put them all in one spot on the front. <laughs> like, I mean, like not not like self termination, but like you know, like making a big making a making a pop where you where, where you're running under all the nozzles. Yeah, dude, I just I just want a cell phone charger down there. <laughs> Always have it on me. Yeah, no, I just uh, like all I want is just like like USB USB A and USB C. Uh, you realize it's 2077 and like those haven't been in use for like decades. <laughs> Listen to me. I know it's ironic. Yeah. <laughs> and like people have, have oh, been goodness. making jokes about this but like fuck it man mix it up <laughs> like that's you know there's there's I, literally there's literally no studio that will ever say it's too hard to animate anything ever again yes set please <laughs> set that precedent where you can just have have anything and everything like whatever well, whatever your the character question needs though to be. is do all of them have jiggle physics i hope so <laughs> they do they do because i remember like when the witcher 3 came out they like did a demo video of the boot physics <laughs> that they have from the game and i was like man you guys are like really proud of this for some yeah. reason uh, no and now they're gonna put it to good use yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah like uh, this is just gonna be a core mechanic yeah later. no shit let, let me customize that like let, let me cu customize everything like if i want f fucking huge knockers and i want them to be rock solid let, honor that <laughs> literal knockers yeah no i want to use them as blunt instruments come on man uh, I just, you know, the, the conversation around the Thanksgiving table of like, so Barry, what you're working on these days? <laughs> yeah, no, just, uh, just, just working on the jiggle, the jiggler reduction algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Which is very different from the juggalo algorithm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, give me that too. Give me all the face paint. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's how you got to get, get around the facial recognition. <laughs> I, I, I read that article. I've, I've read about that. Juggalos are prepared for the cyberpunk future. I, I choose to believe that that they actually came from the future in order to save us from some dystopian. Uh, We're living the dark. Yeah. We are living in the Ten dark carnival. Gone. Yeah. So yeah. AI refuses to make eye contact with Juggalos too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, and there are a few other details in here, like aside from just the 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 primary and secondary sexual characteristics, let's say, um, you know. Uh, but those seem, you know, like I just they they detail like crucifixion, which seems weird to me. Like I'd be curious to see what context that is, but I don't know. I'm still gonna get and play this I game. I also so. wonder, like, that's not like strictly speaking you know, depiction of crucifixion isn't something that's particularly uncommon. 
in in like any sort of horror game or anything like that yeah. or any medium of art yeah for that well matter. that that too <laughs> but i mean even outside of like a biblical you know sense is um, it in vr yet <laughs> well yeah i guess the the um <laughs> the, the assumption like how close to i i don't know cyberpunk how close to like real world does it hew um is it like yeah this grew out of uh real world earth um just a little bit in the future or is it like ah, oh, this is this so, is all yeah. kind of yeah. sideways from how it was that's really weird go, go ahead not con- not confirmed it's a crucifixion they just say that there's nailing through hands and feet in the game i would love plausible deniability i would love the the esrb person that's like yeah there's nailing through hands and feet uh, and, and legs and arms and toy- well, there's a nail gun. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, so it it'd be really weird if they went into that because like the original Deus Ex was it leaned really heavily into you know that kind of Christian iconography. Well, that's why your character's name is JC. I mean, yeah, like, like it's unsubtle, yeah. but it's it's there, you know, <laughs> and the like the way the different endings work out, possibly. With kind of the apotheosis that can happen. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess this game is coming out sometime in September now, which is fine because yeah. I've got too many games to play. But, you know. I um, love how this has become the avatar of, like, take as long as you want on game dev. Because every time they announce like, a delay or, or you're something like that, people are like, yeah, awesome, sweet, good. Yeah. Um, which, you, you know. Can't- can't get angry because you just go and watch the Keanu Reeves video of him saying, you're incredible. Like, <laughs> yeah. This game's going to be great. Yeah. But this, this game, this game has the best fans and it seems to have a pretty good development house behind it. So, I mean, uh, like, so basically for me, any, any delay they put in is like, God, I hope they're treating their workers well because they super don't have a history of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hey, 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 Ben, real quick question for you. Why is there a picture of Red Sonic in the chat? <laughs> oh, somebody was talking about Knuckles, and so there's gotcha. a. I, just, I found an internet picture of what Knuckles would look like with the uh, horrible animation <laughs> from the first pass of the Sonic mm. movie. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's hard. To, like over time, I've gotten less like irksome about the Sonic movie because at least Ben Schwartz got to do something he really loved. So it's really hard to be yeah. like that annoyed at a bad movie if a person you respect had fun making it let's say agree to disagree <laughs> <laughs> wait and did you, did you guys see it yet yeah yeah no I, no I watched it in the theater i did not i thought i had heard that was actually fairly good i was gonna say i thought it was pretty serviceable oh it's a good kids movie uh, so it's, it's probably a fine kids movie i, I could, yeah, I, I could I, see I kids one, digging so. it but you know i mean like for me as a grown-ass man going into it on opening weekend and sitting in the back so i could take notes to talk about it on a on a podcast uh, I was I was left a little bit cold by it, but mm. I was not the target audience. It's you know, it is it is not uh, not my prerogative to say everything must be for me. So it uh, it holds the honor of being the last movie I saw in theaters, maybe ever, depending on how things go. <laughs> <laughs> what a thought! Hey, hey Dennis, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to get a tattoo of it. <laughs> um, how do you guys feel about uh, buttoning it up? Buttons. The credit. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this level number three twenty nine. Uh, next week, we're gonna do a uh, we're gonna do a multiplayer, a free play multiplayer. Um, because mm-hmm. we uh, we didn't do it last time, because uh, uh, that's supposed to be my responsibility, and somebody jumped in and put in a different multiplayer, uh, because I forgot to. So, uh, <laughs> please, I hope that you have been saving up questions over the past ten weeks or so. But if you're listening here, there are things you can do. There's th- there are things you can always do. You can go to uh, patreoncom slash TV, check out the different uh, uh, offerings we have there. As recompense for anything you decide to throw away, you can go to uh, leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. And most of all, you can spread the word because word of mouth is the only way that we have to grow the show. Has been for the past, you know, um, I mean, seven years under this name, um, 11 years-ish under this iteration. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, no, I'm I'm not going to think about that because i suddenly <laughs> feel older than time is there anything i'm forgetting guys 
Uh, no, I was just going to say someone someone did actually uh, leave a review last Ooh. week. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So um, I've been Cole Ross. You can see my tweets at Cole Ross on Twitter. Uh, I've been Dennis Furia. You can find me on Instagram at Deck of Wonders. I'm David Mindsmith. Uh, you know, you can find me after a extended fetch quest. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Ben Merkel, and you can find me watching Cold Streams. And stick around for some titles. Okay, who has titles? Dennis. I have one. Okay. Faults and vaults. <laughs> okay. David. Mm. Okay. Ben. I got spiritually deadening. I got <laughs> what? Uh, me talking about my old like job. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, I like the expression. Oh, spiritually. I, I heard spiritually. Oh, like, weird. Well, yeah. most, most spears are deadening. Yeah. I mean, they're aimed right. <laughs> I got, I can't find a black mage in a gimp mask. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a titan in the world of glass blowing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I like that one quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> the only one that I have is bottles with caps. <laughs> uh, also a glass blowing reference. Yeah. Um, I like a titan in the world of glass blowing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> is, is is that okay with everybody i always i always feel like i gotta look and see how yeah. how long until our last long title but i'm sure we're fine no we're we're good we're good i'm good cool we haven't yes. done a lot of them recently so the time to the last one isn't as long as we keep a a, a hand on the throttle we should be fine oh yeah i'm, I'm looking back now we we're, we're, we're great yeah okay as as love it you can't do two in a row that's the only thing yeah and it can't be like too like you know too too many and- within the last like 10 let's say Unless one week ends with an ellipses and then the <laughs> next week kicks it back up. Right. No, we don't oh, want to do that. No. We don't want to do like a like oh, a, we like a t- we don't coordinate that much. Are you yeah. sure? <laughs> <laughs> dot dot dot. Oh, yes. Uh, you make me think, uh I'll send you an article um yeah, that that just made me think of that will make you guys laugh. Okay. And I will say no more than that. All right. Cool. Well I'm gonna go to bed. Right. Good yeah. night. You, you guys have a good week. Home. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yep. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to go um, lay down because I have a bad headache. Cool. Mm, yeah, take care <laughs> of that. All right, I will. Night. Night, everybody. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.